would want to cross over to the national headquarters of the uh, opposition NDC as the General Secretary, Mr. Fifi Kweti, addresses the media. Various regions pursuing restructuring and using the Ghana Asian Bank and the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund to finance irrigation projects in the Accra Plains, Nigo, Ningo, Pram Pram, Dodoa, and Ada. The Kamba in Upper West Region, Pli and Depo, Veta, Afifa in Enclave in the Volta Region, Amati in the Eastern Region, Mprem in the Central Region, Nasisa, Ligba, and Pagaza in the Northern Region, among others. And finally, the completion of the Pualugu Dam and setting up of land irrigation canals to absorb the spillage from the Bagri Dam from Burkina Faso during the annual spills. Five under infrastructure and development projects. It's promised the building of the Tamale Airport Cargo Service Center for export of agricultural produce, the completion of the Pualugu Dam and other critical infrastructure projects, reviving construction of cocoa roads in cocoa growing communities and completing the Eastern Corridor Road project, completing all abandoned projects and, un and uncompleted by the NPP government, constructing an airport in the Upper East region. Under educational and health, he promised to abolish teachers' lic licensure exams and incorporating the exams into their main academic work as well as improving the quality of education at the teacher training colleges, supporting housing schemes for teachers and implementing salary increments for those in rural areas, continuing the national apprenticeship, apprenticeship program, establishing a modern dialysis center and constructing an airport in the Upper East Region, improving the free SHS, scraping the quota system for admission in nursing and teacher training colleges to increase enrollment, ensuring prompt posting of trained health and teaching professionals, implementing an additional 20% of basic salary for teachers in rural communities, adding teacher accommodation to basic schools, establishing a modern dialysis center in the northern zone of Ghana, working with teachers association to support the housing scheme for teachers on flexible terms. Under environmental protection and sustainable development, he's promised to work very closely with chiefs and other stakeholders to protect the forest reserves of our country. And finally, under industrial economic policies, he's promised a Western industrial development enclave to expand industries and create well-paying jobs and also to continue the National Apprenticeship Program to ensure prompt posting of trained health and teaching professionals. Now, so far, these assurances encapsulate the vision John Mahama presents for Ghana, emphasizing its focus on sustainable development, job creation, anti-corruption measures, and significant improvements in the education and health sectors. A few days ago, the flag bearer of the failed New Patriotic Party Alaji Mahumudu Baumia adored what he described as the next chapter at the auditorium of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, UPSA. Entering the campus of the UPSA for this speech, I hope the MPP flag bearer recognized and appreciated the solid transformation IPS, now UPSA, has undergone under the visionary NDC government of President Mills and President Mahama, and with the leadership of Professor Joshua Labi, then Vice Chancellor of the University. This is the true meaning of we have the men and women of substance, not the MPP kind of we have the men and women. In that very auditorium of the UPSA, the credible, visionary, experienced, incorruptible nation builder, John Dramani Mahama, delivered his groundbreaking speech on building the Ghana we want about 17 months ago on Octo in October 2022. That epochal address was a sequel to Mr. Mahama's alternative policies leading Ghana across road speech in May 2022. This means that 21 months ago, whilst Mahama was espousing alternative policies in the hope that the government will listen to bring relief to suffering Ghanaians, Baumia and his NPP so-called economic management team were busy destroying Ghana's economy, impoverishing Ghanaians, 
in sinking many Ghanaians into great suffering. You may recall John Mahama's promise to abolish the e-levy in May 2022 against the resistance and stubborn impedance from the MPP government and legislators. And you may also remember the following assurances for President Mahama that he will get Ghanaians out of the mess the MPP has created and provide hope for all, strictly enforce prudence in the management of public finances by cutting out waste and ostentation and ensuring the Bank of Ghana plays by the rules, not the malpractices we have seen where the Bank of Ghana has become a money printing machine intoxicating government with seniorage, thereby accelerating inflation to a high of 54%. GM has also promised to restore faith in our almost collapsed financial system and embark on sweeping reforms at the Bank of Ghana. Also actively pursue policies to ensure robust local participation in our banking, financial, telecommunications, mining, agriculture, agribusiness and manufacturing sectors and finally operating the leanest but most efficient government under our fourth republic with 60 ministers and deputy ministers of state in addition to drastically reducing staff at the bloated presidency exactly what is happening in this country just trying very hard to deceive people for votes and do you recall the Vice President Alaji Mahamudu Baunia promising MPP delegates during their presidential primaries in Ewutu Senior East constituency of the Central Region that he will allocate at least 10 appointments to party members in each of the 275 constituencies if he became president. The primaries are over, so obviously his promise to MPP delegates is dead. Alaji Mahamudu Baunia. Ghanaians are not going to fall for your lies. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that long before the MPP flag bearer began thinking about the future, John Mahama had already thought. Hence, no amount of political chicanery can save the MPP come December 7, 2024. Mr. Mahama has also in the past assured Ghanaians that he will initiate and undertake the most far-reaching constitutional, political, and governance reforms to restore confidence in our democracy, in addition to abolishing the payment of S. Gratia to members of the executive under Article 71, and persuading other arms of government to accept the same. Let us face the truth. The MPP promised heaven while Ghana was on earth under Mahama, and has ended up delivering hell to every Ghanaian except their close families and friends. And so how can you trust the MPP going forward? I mean, how? Can you trust a party that sharply criticized and condemned when the dollar was 3.9 Ghana cities and is now busily serving you with an exchange rate of $1 to 12.6 cities, pushing towards 13 cities? Ladies and gentlemen, with the round condemnation and disappointing reception Baumir's speech has received, both in traditional and social media, we would have ordinarily let Ghanaians stick to their own negative verdicts on the Vice President's address. However, because he peddled many lies, we are duty-bound to set the record straight. Moreover, we must bring to the attention of Ghanaians grave character and capacity failures that we believe must not be glossed over if trust is to be restored again in political leadership across the partisan spectrum. The following are six critical deficits Dr. Baumia is suffering from, which make him unfit for the leadership of this country, unlike John Dramani Mahama. The first deficit, vision deficits. A true seventh leader must be endowed with clarity of vision and ability to see far. John Mahama, who came from the Kwame Nkrumah stock, molded by Jerry John Rawlings and inspired by Professor Atta Mills, has proven to have so much of the clarity of vision of his illustrious predecessors. 
It takes a visionary to work closely with Prof. Mills to establish the Etuabo gas processing plants. That single infrastructure has represented a massive game changer within the energy ecosystem of our country. It takes a visionary to make the far-reaching investments in health infrastructure, like the UGMC hospital, the Ridge Hospital, the Gan East Municipal Hospital, the Shai Osudoku Hospital, etc., that became so critical during the COVID-19 pandemic. It takes a visionary head of economic management team to have the far-sightedness to establish a stabilization fund as part of the oil revenue funds. That stabilization fund became a savior to the visionless Baumia-led economic team when COVID struck in the year 2020. It takes a visionary to establish a sinking fund to be used for the repayment of the remainder of the first euro bond, that is the $750 million that Ghana contracted under President Kufo. In nearly eight long years, during which the MPP government has had access to a total resource envelope of over 800 billion cities, the Baumia-led economic team cannot point to one dollar left in any fund to take care of the strangulating debts we are about to start paying very soon from 2025 onward. Not one dollar. It is a visionary to construct over 900 kilometers of rural fiber optic backbone, connecting 120 communities in all from Ho to Boku, with a link from Yendi to Tamale. This superlative vision is acknowledged, even if gradually, by MPP's own Minister for Communication, Esla Ousu, as the biggest telephone infrastructure on which government digitalization efforts are run. It takes a visionary leader to also build a 300 kilometers metro fiber optic network within the Tema Accra enclave that offers Wi-Fi and internet services to the public and institutions at large. Not to forget about the vision to invest in other robust digital infrastructure, the 4G LTE, the National Data Center, the Accra Digital Center, and several electronic applications, including the eservices.gov.gh platform, which the copycat Baumia has now conveniently renamed as Ghana.gov and is busy boasting about. Dr. Baumia boasts about digitalization when he has no idea how these vital investments came about. He must understand that digitalization is not just about buying foreign software and installing them on infrastructure built by the NDC. How can a vice president lower himself to speak as though merely buying a mobile phone is all that is needed to make and receive mobile calls, even if the telecommunication company, companies have not yet built the critically needed cell sites across the country? That is the analogy we are seeing here. How can Dr. Baumia compare licensing private entities laying fiber to the actual investment done by the GM-led NDC in the laying of altogether over 1,500 kilometer fiber optic cable and all the other projects and systems put down by previous NDC administrations? The complete lack of vision of Dr. Baumia-led economic team can be seen in the way they spoke a lot about making a shift towards export, yet has supervised the situation where today importation has rather reached astronomical levels. The paucity of vision can also be seen in the shocking fact that very little has been done by this government to increase the power generation capacity of Ghana, a vital prerequisite for any economic transformation. It takes a visionary leader like JM to set up the ESLA fund, the Ghana Ezim Bank, to get GPHA and Ghana Airport Company to build great and solid bank sheets and leverage such bank sheets to be able to raise billions of dollars for the massive expansion that we see today, both at our at airport and also at our harbor. In doing so, John Mahama was showing he was ahead of the curve. And if Baumia had any humility, he would have learned from John Mahama and not superintended over the most monumental and reckless borrowing 
which has today brought Ghana the shame of not being able to pay her debt and reduce this beautiful country to an object of ridicule all over the world. In addition, it was Mahama's vision and toil that yielded 960,000 metric tons of cocoa production in the year 2016. Today, cocoa production has declined to below 500,000 metric tons. How these clueless and visionless Baumia can even have the audacity to boast about bold solutions beggars belief. We submit to you that Baumia has a massive vision deficit and cannot be compared to John Mahama in any way, shape, or form. Two, responsibility deficits. A true leader takes responsibility for his words and works. He does not take the credit for good things done and seek to blame others for the things that are not good. President Mahama, when he took over from President Mills, did not run away from the previous policies. He could have chosen to create the impression that the single spine salary policy, the implementation of which caused massive problems for our economy, was a policy that he, John Mahama, disagreed with. Instead, like a true leader who has honor, truth, and a sense of responsibility, he took full responsibility for all previous decisions and braved the storms that the single spine brought, particularly the storm which led to about 70% of all of our taxes being used to take care of public sector wages in 2013, what we call the compensation package. Now, it was this expenditure storm that John Muhammad described in the analogy of the meat being down to the bones, which the Baumia-led MPP has deliberately continued to misrepresent as economic mismanagement. Dr. Baumia is running away from what clearly are policies he considered not to be good policies of the very government he serves in as vice president. Has he even had the humility to apologize to the country for any of those policies? No. John Mahama demonstrated a high sense of responsibility. Baumia demonstrated that he has a massive responsibility deficit. Such a person does not have the character to lead our nation. If Dr. Baumia has shown that he can literally stab Nanako Fuado in the back by way of running away from poor policies while taking credit for the good things done, who else is Dr. Baumia not able to betray and throw under the bus? If you can betray the man who overlook other very qualified party officials to pick you an outsider who was not even a party person as running mates, then no one is safe on the Baumia. A Judas cannot be entrusted with the leadership of Ghana. <laughs> President John Dramani Mahama took full responsibility for Dumso, even though Dumso was neither caused by him nor President Mills. But has been the problem of successive governments failing to ramp up energy supply to match up with demand. President John Dramani Mahama blamed nobody and went ahead and resolved that energy crisis one whole year before he left office. What has been the reaction of Baumia to the unprecedented economic collapse? What he cannot blame Nanako Fuado for, he will find another scapegoat. COVID-19, Russia-Ukraine war, and President John Dramani Mahama. Do not be surprised if very soon he blames COVID-19, Russia-Ukraine war, and Mahama for the blaster's catastrophic Afghan performance in Cote d'Ivoire. Don't be surprised at all. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the media, COVID-19 came along in the year 2020. However, the economic problems began as early as 2019, just after they exited the IMF program. As early as 2019, budget deficit had already reached 7%. The city depreciated by nearly 13%. Debt to GDP ratio rose and was already above 60%. So the problem of the economy started way before COVID. 
So anybody trying to gaslight you into believing that the problem is because of COVID, the person is simply taking Ghanaians for fools. The failure to take responsibility on the part of Baumia shows that he has not got the humility to accept when he's wrong. If you cannot take responsibility for your poor policy decisions, which predated COVID, Ghana cannot be safe in your hands. Three, credibility deficits. If there is a single area where Alaji Baumia has the biggest character deficit, it is the arena of credibility and trustworthiness. And we all know the critical value of trustworthiness in life in general and in leadership in particular. A few rhetorical questions will suffice. Now here they come. How can you be trusted when you proclaim yourself as the leader of a solid economic management team and yet land the economy in the total collapse we see today? How can you be trusted when you proclaim in 2012 that when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you, only to turn around in 2019 when the currency was fast depreciating? And then you say that you made that statement rather in 2014 and not in 2012 where the fundamentals were weak, when the records show that the statement actually was made in 2012 at the time when the fundamentals were relatively stronger. How can you be trusted? How can you be trusted when you proclaim that you will move the economy from taxation to production only to heap myriads of taxes on suffering Ghanaians? How can you be trusted when you proclaim that your so-called solid economic management team has stabilized the city dollar rates and locked the dollar and left the padlock with the IGP mm -hmm. only for the city to break jail right from 2019 when it depreciated by nearly 13% and now pushing towards 13 cities to the dollar. How can you be trusted when you boasted that under your economic leadership, Ghana will see growth and growth and growth, and jobs and jobs and jobs, only for Ghana to experience unprecedented levels of unemployment seen in the recent history of our country? How can you be trusted when you boldly claim that no village or community in Ghana will have water or toilet problem within the first 18 months of being elected? How can you be trusted when you still claim in February 2024 that Doomso was fixed by your government? When you yourself admitted back in 2016 in the premises of multimedia that John Mahama fixed Doomso but should not be praised for doing so? How can you be trusted when you declared we don't have to borrow for roads? The money is here. All we need is to tow the roads and we'll get the money to build all the roads we need. How can we trust you? How can we trust you when you promise that all SHS students will receive free tablet in the year 2023? And you've done nothing about that. How can you be trusted when you deliberately lied to the people of Cape Coast in 2020 that a brand new harbor was being built for them? I mean, it's capable of promising harbor even where there's no sea. <laughs> Sadly, that is, that is the person we are talking about. He can, he can promise a harbor even when there is no sea. How can you be trusted when on your own free will, you promise that the MPP government will start constructing roads with concrete instead of asphalt? Not a gun was put on your head. On your own free will, you make this promise. What have you done about it? Nothing. How can you be trusted when you promise the construction of 16 model schools for Zungo communities in all the 16 regions of Ghana in the presence of His Eminence, the National Chief Imam? Oh my God, it's capable of even lying in the presence of the Chief Imam. God of mercy. The examples of the deliberate lies are too numerous to exhaust. Friends from the media, on the issue of the MPP flatbed's deceptive promise to scrap some taxes, let us critically examine the obtuse logic that he's canvassing. Essentially, this is what he's saying to the people of Ghana. I know that together with President Akufuado, we have imposed several draconian taxes on you, but endure them for the next 10 months. While I continue in office as Vice President on the ticket of the new patriotic party, 
and as chairman of the economic management team. After enjoying the hardships imposed on you by my government and party, you can vote for me to become president on the ticket for the MPP, and then I promise to scrap just three of the about 40 taxes we have imposed on you in the last eight years. Think seriously about this, ladies and gentlemen. This is why we insist that a vote for Baumia is in reality just a third term of Nanako Fuado. It's simply the status quo. Ladies and gentlemen, this so-called promise comes from the same men who have used flattery to deceive you with their promise to move Ghana from, product, from taxation to production. The Vice President's previous promises to reduce the tax burden on, on Ghanaians, not to tax our mobile money wallets, and to lower import duties on spare parts are just a few of the promises that have turned into lies. The same man suddenly thinks Ghanaians have a short memory and is once again promising to scrap taxes to hoodwink the Ghanaian electorate. Should we remind him that Ghanaians still remember his instrumental role in crafting the obnoxious e-levy policy, as was confirmed publicly by the then Minister for Information, Kojo Opon Kruma, and John Buedu, the former General Secretary of the NPP. We still remember his important role in the recent IMF negotiations. His actions have resulted in the implementation of the emissions levy, which many consider useless, and the imposition of VAT on previously exempt items. We in the NDC have always opposed the draconian taxes imposed on Ghanaians by the insensitive Akufuado Baumia government. We and our gallant members of parliament have always stood on the side of the suffering Ghanaian people and businesses. Our advice to the Vice President is that if he has indeed turned a new leaf and has seen the lies like Saul on his way to Damascus, he should show genuine repentance by first apologizing to Ghanaians and then join the NDC to scrap these taxes now and not in the future. The Ghanaian people cannot live through another day of these suffocating taxes, let alone 10 good months. The time to scrap the crippling and draconian taxes that the MPP has imposed on suffering Ghanaians is now and not in the next 10 months. How is it possible to trust a vice president who has shown no remorse or penitence about deliberately lying and conning the people of Ghana? A man who believes that leaders can continue to fool all the people all the time. A man whose words cannot be trusted is a man who is not fit to lead. Who among you will entrust his business in the hands of a man who cannot be trusted to tell the truth? Who among you will entrust his private property or business into such a hand? Imagine, therefore, the greater tragedy of committing Ghana and her 30 millions of citizens and her future into the hands of a man whose words are worth very little and who does not understand the meaning of credibility and trustworthiness. Four, gratitude deficits. A true leader acknowledges the contributions of his predecessors. True leaders understand the leadership is like a relay race, and he or she builds the new by acknowledging and appreciating what contribution was handed over to him. Mills Mahama led NDC acknowledged that the N1 highway was the accomplishment of the Kufour led MPP, even though the entire work was virtually done during the tenure of Mills Mahama. Mills Mahama led NDC similarly did not take credit did not take any credit for the building of the Bui Dam, even though the administration even borrowed additional money to see to the completion of the Bui Dam project. When eventually the Bui Dam was being commissioned, President Kufour was invited and duly acknowledged as a leader whose government secured the finance for the dam. This gratitude, just a minute, this gratitude is a mark of a secure leader. Unfortunately, Dr. Baumia has a massive gratitude deficit. 
Now it takes somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that the tema to a consumer now Mpakadan real line is the achievement of the MPP government. When all records show that the financing was secured in 2016, at the time I was in charge of the transport ministry. Mm -hmm. One whole year before Nana Akufuado Baumia came into office. Cabinets and parliamentary approvals were also finalized before John Mahama left office in January of 2017. Two, it shows somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that Doomsaw was not resolved before the coming of the MPP in 2017. When Baumia himself publicly declared that John Mahama should not be unduly, should not unduly celebrate for solving the energy crisis because you're the one who brought it in the first place. Nana Poku of the MPP, I think he stood uh, in the flat bearer race of the MPP, who also is into energy, has publicly also stated that it was the JM-led NDC that solved the problem of Dumiso. Yes, you have somebody who today is showing such ingratitude and doesn't want to acknowledge that this is the work that has been done by the predecessor. To claim that the MPP government introduced the online passport application system when the truth is that the online application system was launched under John Mahama in December 2016. It is somebody who does not show gratitude to claim that the card was nothing to write home about until January 7, 2017. Dr. Baumia deliberately ignored the significant contributions of the NDC Mahama administration in developing the Ghana card system to what it is today. The fact that by 2016, the Mahama administration had already passed the law that makes the Ghana card the sole document for identification purposes for any transaction. That's the LI-2111. The, the government at the time had made sure that biometric and demographic data had already been collected on about 16 million Ghanaians. We had processed about 4.7 million cards distributed about 900,000 cards and procured 9 million blank cards. Upon assumption of office in 2017, Dr. Baumia constituted a three-man committee headed by Prof. Ken Atefua to review the contract and implementation of the Ghana card system. The committee established the fact enumerated above, which is contained on page one of the report and recommended the use of the existing database to continue where the NDC left off. Indeed, the NIA boss, Prof. Ken Atefua, told Parliament that the contract that was signed by the NDC Mahama administration with the margins group is the same contract that is being implemented today. Yet, somebody suffering from such massive gratitude deficit refuses to acknowledge this job that has been done by the predecessor. Clearly, this government only came to continue the implementation of a system that had already been developed by the NDC Mahama government as a continuation of what was started under President Kufuor and continued by President Mills of Blessing Memory. The Ghana card credit must therefore be shared by all successive governments who have contributed to where we are today. Baumia does not even credit his boss, Akufuado, even though he's in disguise just a third term of, he's just a third term of Nana Akufuado. But we need to still call him out for trying to play a fast one on the nation but conveniently throwing his, bus under the, his boss under the bus. But Baumia, you know what? We see your game, and we are not going to be fooled by it. Now, if Dr. Baumia finds it difficult to acknowledge and show gratitude for what a predecessor government has done, why is Ghana surprised that he pretends not to know the following solid accomplishments that he and Anako Fuado inherited upon coming into office. And here are some of them. A sinking fund that had $250 million for the repayment of the remainder of the first euro bond that Ghana contracted under President Kufo was handed over to Anako Fuado and Baumia. A Ghana infrastructure and investment fund of $270 million was handed over to the two of them. A stabilization fund of $250 million, which the government fell on when COVID broke in 2020, 
was handed over to them. An Esla fund of not less than 3 billion CDs per year was handed over to them. Cocoa output of 930,000 metric tons handed over to them. A gross international reserve of $6.2 billion handed over to them. A balance of payment surplus handed over to them. Two new oil fields that accounted for the 8% growth that the MPP got in 2017 handed over to them. They boast about that 8% growth, but are unable to show gratitude for the government that toiled to make sure that 8% became a reality. Ghana is in bank. That became the vehicle to fund the 1D1F was handed over to them. The Canadian finance to the agri sector that MPP used for the planting for food and job handed over to them. The buffer stock that became crucial for the planting for food and jobs handed over to them. 637 million of the 937 million IMF deal that the NDC government went into was inherited and drawn down by the Akufuado Baumia government. Yes, they pretended that they came to meet a mess. The massive stock of energy infrastructure, health infrastructure, educational infrastructure, transport and water infrastructure. In short, the biggest legacy of infrastructure bequeathed to any administration in the history of the Fourth Republic, and possibly the most since the independence of Ghana, was handed over to Nana Kufuado and Baumia. An ungrateful person caused all the above an economic mess left behind. What a massive gratitude deficit. Baumia is clearly not fit for leadership. John Mahama's ability to acknowledge what work was previously done makes him a person who has got gratitude and such a person is truly fit for leadership. Five, competency deficit. Competence must be the hallmark of a true leader. He must possess the capacity to accomplish a lot even with minimal resources. That's exactly what Ghana saw when John Mahama was in charge of the economic management team and later became the president of the republic. It is competence to bring inflation from 21% where it reached around May of 2009 down into single digits and keep it consistently there for 33 long months, almost three years. The longest period in the fourth republic and possibly since independence. Incompetent Baumia, as head of economic management team, could barely keep inflation in single digits for any appreciable period, and actually supervise the same going all the way up to 54%, when all over Africa, no serious country experienced any such level of inflation. And he had the temerity to call John Mahama incompetent. It is competence to accomplish the record of high growth Ghana saw under JM as head of economic management team. About 8% in 2010, before oil, 14% in 2011, with non-oil standing at 8%. So it's not just about oil, it's also about the non-oil growth being as strong as 8%, which is the highest MPP has seen since they've been in power over the last eight years. Under John Mahama, as head of economic management team, another 9% was chalk again in the year 2012 as well. The highest growth rate under Baumia was fully attributable to the two oil fields handed over to the MPP by the Mahama-led NDC. It is competence to achieve cocoa output of 1 million metric tons, as we saw in the year 2011, and almost repeated the same in the agricultural sector in 2016 under JM. Under incompetent Baumia, cocoa production is now about half of that quantum. It is competence to get a B plus rating that Ghana recorded in 2012 when John Mahama was head of the economic management team. Under incompetent Baumia, our rating is now D, junk status. This is an absolute disgrace to Ghana. A proud nation that has been brought onto her knees by a disastrous economic management team led by a man who talks big.
spake, but delivers little. In eight years, when he served as head of economic management team and president, total debts accrued stood at about 110 billion cities. And I'm talking here about His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. We took the debts from about 10 billion at the close of 2008 to 120 billion cities at the close of 2016. With this relatively small quantum of resources, Ghana can point to arguably the most massive infrastructure investment seen in our country, in the Fourth Republic. In the whole of 2016, not even one city was received from the Bank of Ghana, yet inflation was brought down to 15.4%, table rates down to 16%, debt to GDP stood at 57%, non-oil GDP was 4.3%, budget deficit stood at 6.1%, Capital expenditure as a percentage of GDP stood at 4.2%, while the CD depreciated by only 9.6%. It was in that same year that the foundations were established for the 8% GDP growth that MPP came to inherit in the year 2017. Incidentally, this has been the highest growth of their eight-year mandate. Growth has never come close to any, any closer to that since 2017 tells you that even their best was actually our inheritance. Yet, they boast about being competent. Now, contrast this level of competence with the tragic incompetence of the big-talking Mahmoud Obamia. Mm -hmm. Between July 2020 to December 2020 alone, the baumia led economic team assessed not less than 30 billion cities resource during COVID. 30 billion cities, not less, during COVID. That alone represents almost the whole of the borrowing done in the first four years of the Mills Mahama government, when the foundations were being laid for astronomical legacy of infrastructure investment we see today. The 30 billion cities represented a little over one third of the total debt accrued in the eight long years of the Mills Mahama administration. Despite getting this colossal amount, when it was just left with six months to end their first term, Dr. Ba Mount Maumia led economic management team still managed to achieve a record zero growth in GDP. They left an unprecedented budget deficit of 15% when the rest of Africa did not see this level of economic and fiscal calamity. The economy never recovered from this level of recklessness. No wonder. We have subsequently seen debts rising to over 600 billion cities. Inflation hitting 54%, debt to GDP over 100%, and all these have stripped us completely naked and left Ghana, a proud country crawling before international investors like dust-eating F1s. The crowning shame of the much acclaimed solid team under the so-called economic messiah. Cheer! <laughs> I hope nobody says, nobody asks me who says cheer. <laughs> Six, experience deficit. Need I say more? It is a notorious fact that John Dramani Mahama is the experience tried and tested visionary nation builder and the leader Ghana needs to fix the mess and the avoidable socio-economic hardship and pain that this MPP government has visited on the good people of Ghana. Therefore, Ghanaians cannot wait to see the back of this incompetent and clueless MPP government from office come December 7, 2024. The MPP has done enough damage to families to the destruction of livelihoods, financial haircuts, unprecedented unemployment, etc. There is no time for a trial and error president because Ghana is in a deep hole and Ghanaians are suffering. Ghanaians opted for a try me president and running mate in 2016, and the verdict has been a total catastrophe. Ghanaians already know that John Mahama, as chairman of the economic management team, 
under President Natamiel's achieved single-digit inflation for over 30 continuous months and a GDP growth, as I hinted earlier, of 14% in 2011. Even when the economy faced serious headwinds, President Mahama quickly restored the economy to good health, such that Ghana's economy was predicted to grow and did grow at 8% in 2017. Three active oil-producing fields were handed over to them. Note that John Mahama had access to revenue from only one oil field. Nevertheless, he handed over revenue from three oil fields because Mahama added two more fields, 10 in Sankofa before he left office. This is what experience and vision does. And this is the experience Mahama is bringing to address the challenges Ghana is facing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the economy the MPP inherited from the experienced John Dramani Mahama in 2017 provided 100% funding of government budgets without recourse to the eurobond market. As a result, they resorted to borrowing the, from the eurobond market until the economy has given up the ghost. Because by 2018, the MPP had brought the economy under so much pressure due to the massive mis mismanagement. And then that is what today has led to the domestic debt exchange program and the cruel haircut that the people of Ghana have had to suffer. The city is currently exchanging for $1 to 12.6, when it was just 4.2 in John Mahama's time due to Mahama's prudent and innovative management of the economy. The national debt has now ballooned from 120 billion to over 600 billion Ghana cities. Fellow Ghanaians, we need a man with vision and experience to fix the mess. John Dramani Mahama is that man with the experience required to fix this mess and take Ghana to the next level of progress and prosperity. Now let me just comment a little on uh, the news that came today regarding uh, some so-called reshuffle. So let's talk a little about the illusion of change, Akufuado's government reshuffle. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, just before this presser, news of a supposed government reshuffle came in. And we must say that we are once again highly disappointed in this government, even though Disappointment in this government has become the norm. We were at least expecting some level of change amidst Dr. Baumier's promise to govern Ghana with only 50 ministers. But what do we see? A continuation of the status quo that has plagued our nation's progress. In an era where the clamor for efficient governance and fiscal prudence has never been louder, the recent reshuffle by President Akufuado starkly reflects a government in disarray obstinately disconnected from the realities of his people. Despite the vociferous appeals from Ghanaians, civil society, the clergy, academics, and think tanks to trim the bloated size of government, a glaring drain on our nation's scarce resources, this administration has once again turned a deaf ear. And remember, the vice president of this republic continues to be Dr. Mahmoud Baouya. And clearly he's aware of what is going on. If 50 is worth doing, then 50 should as well be done now to let the people of Ghana know you mean it. But clearly, it does not mean it. Now, the insistence on maintaining a government apparatus comprising so many ministers is not only a slap in the face of the Ghanaian taxpayer, but a testament to an entrenched culture of profligacy, cronism, and a disturbing myopic view of governance. This unwieldy government size, under the guise of facilitating development, has instead catalyzed an era marked by inefficiency and unfulfilled promises. Enter Dr. Baumia, the vice president, and the freshly minted flabber of the MPP, who now promises a government of only 50 ministers. This play starkly contrasts the current administration's excesses and rings hollow in the face of his long-standing defense of this government bloat. Dr. Baumia's sudden pivot amidst the economic turmoil our nation endures is emblematic of a desperate ploy for votes, a deception that the Ghanaian people can see through with clarity. Today's reshuffle by President Akufuado, rather than offering a beacon of hope for a leaner, more efficient government, has instead upheld the status quo. 
It is a profound disappointment and a missed opportunity to heed the people's call for change. This action, or rather inaction, and that's caused a blatant disregard for the nation's plea for governance that puts the people's welfare above political expediency. It is particularly disheartening to witness the recycling of ministers who over the past seven years have demonstrated a stark inability to propel our nation forward. This reshuffle, far from being a strategic realignment, is merely a superficial rearrangement of pieces on a board with no real intent to address the systemic failures that plague our governance. Dr. Baumier's slogan, it is possible, now begs the question, if indeed it is possible, why not now? If indeed it is possible, why the waits, if not for political convenience at the expense of the national well-being of Ghana? This reshuffle could have been a moment of bold leadership, a signal of a genuine commitment to reform. Yet, it stands as a testament to a government marking time, lacking the vision or the will to implement the drastic changes Ghana so urgently requires. As the NDC, under the distinguished leadership of His Excellency John Domani Mahama has said, we reaffirm our commitment to the people of Ghana, a commitment to deliver governance that is not only efficient and lean, but also transparent, accountable, and responsive to the needs of every Ghanaian. When John Damani Mama says 60 ministers and no more, you can virtually take that to the bank. It's as good as gold. When Baumia says 50, you just remember exactly the litany of lies and disappointment and the fact that he's part of this government that today simply could not even demonstrate that 50 now. The December 7th election presents an opportunity for the people of Ghana to voice their verdicts on this administration's failures. It is a chance to embrace a future under a leader who not only understands the gravity of the challenges we face, but possesses the proven track record the integrity and the vision to overcome them. This reshuffle, which is much ado about nothing, and that's called the urgent need for change, a change towards a government that respects its mandate to serve, not to squander. A government of action, not mere words. And the NDC stands ready to usher in this new dawn for Ghana. Now, the conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have laid bare before you today, the choice we face in the upcoming elections is not merely a choice between two individuals. It's a choice between two futures. On one hand, we have the path that perpetuates the status quo, which is actually a third term for Nanako Fuado, marked by unfulfilled promises and a vision that falls short of our grandest dreams. On the other hand, we have the path championed by His Excellency John Damani Mahama, a path that promises to rekindle the flame of hope, to rebuild the foundations of our great nation, and to propel us into a future where every Ghanaian, regardless of their background, can dream of a better tomorrow that will see it, that dream of a great Ghana become a reality. John Mahama's vision for Ghana is not just a series of policies and promises. It is a call to action, a call to believe in the possibility of change, to remember the strength that lies in our unity, and to recognize the power of our voices and our votes to be able to shape the destiny of our country. Therefore, I stand before you, not just as a general secretary of the great NDC, but as a fellow citizen of the great Republic of Ghana. And I'm issuing a clarion call to every Ghanaian. Let us rally behind a leader who has demonstrated time and again his commitment to our welfare, his dedication to our progress, and his unwavering resolve to lift Ghana to new heights of glory. Let this election be more than just a political contest. Let it be a referendum on the kind of Ghana we want to build for ourselves and for generations yet unborn. Let us choose hope over despair, action over inaction, progress over stagnation. Let us choose John Dramani Mahama, 
a leader who embodies the best of our values, our aspirations, and our dreams. With just 297 days to go until the presidential and parliamentary elections, let every conversation, every debate, and every moment be an opportunity to advocate for a vision of Ghana that is rooted in progress, inclusivity, and justice. Let us work tirelessly, not just to secure a victory for John Mahama, but to secure a victory for every Ghanaian who dreams of a better tomorrow. Fellow Ghanaians, your vote is your voice. It is the most powerful weapon you wield in the fight for your future. On December 7, 2024, I urge you to vote for John Dramani Mahama. But beyond casting your votes, I urge you to become an ambassador of change, to spread the word, to ignite the heart of your neighbors, friends, and family with the promise of what Ghana can become under the leadership of a man who has not just got a vision, but also the experience, the integrity, the credibility, and above all, the heart to lead us forward. <laughs> Together, let us make history. Together, let's choose a future that reflects our highest ideals and aspirations. Together, let's vote for John Dramani Mahama, and in doing so, let's take the first step towards building a Ghana that shines as a beacon of hope, prosperity, and unity for all of Africa and the world. Finally, when you cast your vote for John Mahama and our parliamentary candidate on December 7, dear fellow Ghanaians, rest assured that every single vote will be accounted for. We are committed to ensuring that your votes are not only counted, but also fiercely protected. Your choice and your voice matter. And together, we will safeguard the integrity of our democratic progress. The time for action is now. The future is in your hands. Let us rise up and make it a reality. God bless you all, and God bless our homeland. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for the General Secretary. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do you have any questions for us? I can see from that all your questions have been answered. Is that the case? Uh, friends from the media, do you have any questions for... Thank you very much. Um, let me once again acknowledge various media houses who streamed this press conference live on their esteemed platforms. We are grateful to Joy News. We are grateful to Asempa FM. We are grateful to United Television. We are grateful to CTV, GH1 TV, uh, Loud Silence TV, TV XYZ, Power FM. We are also grateful to Class FM and the whole CMG group, Ahoto FM, Power FM, Radio Gold, and the NDC Communication Bureau page for streaming this press conference live. Uh, before we sign out, I want to thank all of you for coming, and I would like to appeal to you that when next you see an invitation extended to you for a press engagement such as this, kindly endeavor to come on time, because we would like to start our press engagements on time this year, 2024. So thank you very much for coming. We will make the uh, copies of the statement you read available to you, both in hard and soft form. And uh, even though times are tough, we will try and see you off properly before you go. Thank you once again for coming. So for account stations who may want key interviews on the sidelines, my ever director legal is here. He speaks fluently. He will grant you any interview. So UTV, all the account stations, um, Edu G. Tamaklu Esquire is standing by to grant you interviews. Thank you for coming.